Hello and welcome to another TLDR Explains video about so-called non-essential behaviour. There's been a fair bit of confusion since the new coronavirus regulations came in about what they actually say. Can you buy non-essential goods? What counts as essential? Can you drive to the park to exercise? So in this video, we're going to explain exactly what the law says you're allowed to do during the UK's lockdown. Before we get going, I want to let you know that our series, Opinionated, is about to return. Last year we asked you what you thought about a second referendum, foreign aid, burqa bans and weed legislation. For this series, we want to know your thoughts on universal basic income, the cost of university, nuclear power and whether the UK should adopt a written constitution. We have the survey up now, it's linked down below, so tell us what you think and have your views featured in the new series. Also, everyone who completes the survey will get entered into an instant win competition, where everyone wins something, with prizes ranging from discounts in our merch store, to vouchers, to even free badges. So fill out the survey and get your prize now. So as we mentioned in our earlier video, the government recently passed the new Coronavirus Act 2020. It sets out new regulations which describe what you can and can't do during the coronavirus outbreak. We'll leave a link to the act down below if you feel like having a quick read, but if you can't be bothered, here's a summary of the bits you should be aware of. If you're caught breaking the regulations, you can be hit with an on-the-spot £30 fine, which rises to £60 if you don't pay it within 14 days. The fine then doubles every time you re-offend, with a £960 upper limit. If you don't comply, the police can, to quote section 8 paragraph 4, use reasonable force if necessary in the exercise of power. As you can see, these new regulations have substantially expanded police authority. In this sort of situation, it's important that both the public and the police themselves know the limits of these powers, and that the police stick to enforcing the law and not morality. This might sound a bit dramatic, and we're not saying that the UK is some oppressive authoritarian regime just that the state should stick to the law. That's what the law is for, after all. In the last couple of days, two lords, Lord Sumption, former Supreme Court Justice, and Lord Anderson, have expressed some concern about this, in response to what they saw as the police overstepping. Lord Anderson said that the police, in their words and actions, need to be clear about the difference between rules and guidance both to maintain public confidence in their role and to discourage snoopers, snitchers and vigilantes. On Radio 4's World at One programme, Lord Sumption went a bit further, talking about the now infamous video by Derbyshire County Police. He said, this is what a police state is like. It's a state where the government can issue orders, express preferences with no legal authority and the police will enforce ministers' wishes. If you haven't seen the Derbyshire County Police video, it's worth watching. It's on their Twitter. It's basically them following dog walkers in the Peak District with drones, telling them that what they're doing is non-essential, in big angry capital letters. In his interview, Lord Sumption also mentioned a case in the Peak District, where the police put black dye in the Blue Lagoon to discourage visitors. And these aren't the only cases either. Warrington police sent summons to multiple people in the same household for going to the shops for non-essential items as a group. Rains Park police had a go at people for sitting down in the park. Denton police told people in a now-deleted tweet that exercise is limited to an hour per day, and there have been reports of council officers telling shops to stop selling Easter eggs as they're not essential. Now some of this sounds pretty insane, but what do the rules actually say? Well, when it comes to exercise, the regulations are remarkably relaxed. According to section 60 paragraph 1, you're not allowed to leave the house without reasonable excuse. According to paragraph 2 section B, a reasonable excuse includes the need to take exercise either alone or with members of the household. There's no limit on how long or how many times a day. You're also allowed to drive your car to get there, and there's no limit on how far you're allowed to travel away from your home. Notably, in the law, the word essential isn't even mentioned. So what about food? Are you only allowed to buy essential goods? Well again, according to section 60, a reasonable excuse includes the need to obtain basic necessities, including food from a business listed in part 3 of schedule 2. Part 3 of schedule 2 lists the following businesses. Food retailers, including food markets, supermarkets, convenience stores and corner shops, 
off licenses and licensed stores selling alcohol, including breweries and news agents. Again, the word essential isn't mentioned anywhere. You can buy whatever you want from a supermarket if it's in stock. And there's a good reason the word essential isn't mentioned, because it would be impossible to enforce legally. Maybe an Easter egg isn't essential, but then again, what is? Is foaming barista oat milk essential, or only the non-foamy stuff? Are the police going to go around and stop overweight people from buying pastries because they don't need it? Unless the government is really going to start rationing out fuel to try and limit people to only the so-called essential goods, this will be impossible to enforce. We should say that we're not having a go at police here. For starters, it's not really their fault. The government has been pretty rubbish at communicating, sending out confusing mixed signals. For example, you might have noticed that in the regulations there's no limit on daily exercise, but Johnson said quite explicitly in his address to the nation that you could only leave the house for exercise once per day. While this might be good advice and might minimise the crisis, it's not actually part of the law. Similarly, you're allowed a socially distanced gathering of two, but you can only exercise alone. Does this mean you can go for a walk with someone you're living with, or do you have to just stay still? The point is that Johnson and some of his ministers have said stuff that isn't included in the regulations, and the regulations themselves are ambiguous in places, which can make enforcing the regulations confusing. The point is that policing beyond the law isn't good for anyone. Even if you think people shouldn't be going to the shops to buy Easter eggs, it isn't good for the police to be enforcing these things for two reasons. Firstly, it makes people less likely to listen to them in the long run. If you think the police are deviating from the law, the next time they stop you, even if it's for a good reason on that occasion, you're more likely to dismiss it as baseless, overzealous policing. If the police lose public trust early on, they're going to struggle to enforce lockdown regulations in the next six months or so that the lockdown lasts. Secondly, it's a hallmark of liberal democracy that the state enforces the law and the law only. If you really think that dog walking in the Peak District is an immoral thing to do, you're free to express your disdain. But this is a moral issue, not a legal one, so it's not for the police to get involved with. Again, the UK is a long way from a totalitarian state, but it's worth calling it out when you see it. On a final note, we'd like to stress once again that we're not just having a go at the police here. The government has failed to communicate with the police or the general public, and the vast, vast majority of the police are doing amazing work, which we're exceptionally grateful for. We're just trying to make the point that policing beyond the law isn't good for anyone, including the police, regardless of the situation, and it's especially damaging over the longer term. If you enjoyed this video and want more updates on us as the corona crisis continues, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video.